It's nothing like a good coffee, right? We're talking about NAS here. My name is Emilio, I love tech, and we've got ourselves a couple of NAS devices right over here. One is our Synology NAS, the other one is a QNAP NAS. Now the QNAP and the Synology are probably the two more popular NAS brands aimed at the home, small business users. There's a whole bunch of other brands out there. One right? thing that I tell people more than anything is the importance of backups. They only think about backups when something has disappeared, been deleted, a server is now gone, and then they go, ah, why didn't I do a backup? Having a proper backup solution is one of the most important things that you can do. A proper piece of software that can back up all your files, that can back up your servers. This is why I've got to tell you about this software package called VinChin. This is a professional enterprise level data backup and disaster recovery piece of software. VinChin supports backing up your VMs, your Windows and your Linux operating systems, your databases, including Oracle, SQL, your file servers, your Exchange email servers. It also supports agentless backups of more than 15 virtualization platforms, including VMware, Hyper-V, Proxmox, and a whole bunch more. And it also does cloud backups for your AWS EC2. So it has advanced disaster recovery features like CDP, which is continuous data protection, instant VM recovery, and even ransomware protection. Their web console is also very easy to operate and very easy to use. Do not risk your tech your servers, your data accidentally being lost, accidentally being deleted. Down below of this video description, you can go and pick that software package up. Go give it a look. Hey, we release videos all the time on all things tech. Today we're talking about NASs, but we talk about other stuff as well on this channel, Tech with Amelia. Would love it if you click the subscription button. And also you wanna know more about technology. You wanna learn a lot more from a training perspective, full length training course on becoming a pro at managing and administering your Synology NAS, and another training course, become a pro at administering your QNAP NAS. Other tech around servers, around networking, around cybersecurity, all of those sort of things, you can go check out some of those training courses, links down below of this video. Beautiful, like the beans that I've got in here right now are like schmick, they're pretty good. Now, first things first is you'll notice that we've got two different form factors for this NAS, right? We've got a Synology desktop-based NAS and a QNAP rack-based NAS. This one is for a desk, you know, it's not made for a server rack. This one is made to have rails on the sides and then you slide it inside of a server rack that's sitting inside of a server room in a data center, that sort of thing. But the bits inside of it, are not too different. Of course, the bigger ones are gonna have a lot more advantages from a expandability perspective, but we'll cover that a little bit. This one is a DS1621, and it has six bays at the front. You can stick the bigger hard drives, the smaller hard drives in that one. Then you've got our QNAP. This is the TSH987XU, RP, and it is a nine bay NAS. Now look, I know you're probably going, hang on, I can only see four on the front, and that's true. There's only four on the front. You can put in the two and a half, or the three and a half inch ones, but then when you open the thing up, there's actually slots there for another five, two and a half inches inside of the unit. It's pretty cool. Now the only other thing that I'll make mention is that you can also put NVMe storage in some of these, so you can actually get expandable uh, fast cache, cache, Australia, cache, whatever, wherever you're from. Let's talk about the Synology NAS. As I said, it's six bay. It's designed for your home users, for your small business users. Now Synology, of course, come with a whole range of NAS devices out there, right? So even though this is a six bay, you can also get Synology ones in much smaller, maybe a two bay NAS. You can also get them in much bigger and you can also get Synology NASs in a rack based NAS form factor as well, right? So you can actually stick it inside of a server cabinet. We'll go through the specs in a little bit more detail later on, but then we've got our QNAP NAS right here, commonly gonna be aimed at the business market, larger businesses, the enterprise users, because it is now rack based and you can do a lot more with it. Now, both of these units can be used for two primary purposes. One is for storage of data, storage of files. They can be used for, you know, like uh, creating shares, and then you can share them out on the network. You can have people in a network, at home, in a business, wherever, accessing SMB shares or accessing NFS shares, right? For storing of your documents, your movies, all of that sort of stuff, yeah? 
and it can also be used for storing of virtualization platforms. So you can connect these as uh, NAS-based or SAN-based devices to VMware, to Hyper-V, to Proxmox, all of these virtualization platforms to use these as the storage location for that data. Talking about storage as well, they can also be used for backups, where a lot of companies will use these as the backup medium. So you've got servers with a whole bunch of like file servers and things like that, and then you need backups and you run some backup software to then back up the data to these NASs. The great thing about both these NASs is you can actually run backup software directly on the NASs to actually back up data across your network devices. So data storage is the first thing. The second thing is to run apps on them. If you know your Apple store, your Google store, you get apps, right? They've got apps. So QNAP, Synology have made app stores. We can go and download a whole bunch of applications and make these things not only storing files, but now acting essentially as an application server. And they can do a whole bunch of things. There's a lot out there. Synology, this is where I'm logged in. This is the operating system by Synology. You've got yourself a nice little applications over here. You've got a, it's not a start menu, but it's a main menu button on the top left-hand corner. And then you've got a package center, which is where you install all your applications. And then there's this thing called the control panel where you can go and navigate through all these different sorts of options. And you can see it's sort of pretty easy to navigate. You've got a file explorer uh, to install applications inside the package center. You make sure you find the app that you want. You can install applications that are made by Synology, by other brands. You can install things manually. There's a whole range of features over here. There's also the section under here where you manage all of your storage. You can see a little bit of information about your NAS, how it's been set up. Here I've got my M2s, uh, my um, uh, NVMEs in here, my volumes. I can see my storage pools that I've got and then the hard drive configurations. And in here I've got uh, a couple of Synology drives and I've got the rest are Seagate. So that's a little bit of a summary on the Synology, then the comparison of the QNAP. This is what the QNAP looks like. Uh, slightly different. Synology, like that, okay? Icons are on the left, you've got a main menu. This one, again, top left-hand menu, you've got a uh, little bit, bit more like Windows, I guess, where it opens up uh, this way, instead of opening up on the Synology where it opens up the whole lot, like that, on the QNAP. Uh, you've got access to all of your stuff in here. You've got the App Center, which is their equivalent of the App Store, and you can sort of navigate and see all of their apps. And the same thing is you can install these things manually. You can download them from the internet, install them manually. You've got apps that have been made by QNAP, by their developers, and then apps that have been made by other third-party companies. But you'll find that the apps between the two are fairly similar. So Plex would be one, like Plex is available on both. It's actually available in a lot of NAS you know, um, brands, not even Synology and QNAP. There's other brands as well that allow you to do Plex, but you'll find that a lot of the same apps are gonna be available across the two platforms, okay? So that's just one thing there. Uh, another thing is that um, you've got the control panel and it looks very different, I think. If I go back to the Synology, this is their control panel. Okay, sort of navigated with big icons, even though you can change the view. This one seems to have a lot more stuff, can be a little bit more complicated, a little bit harder sometimes I find to find certain things, but uh, I find that the interface of the Synology NAS is a little bit more user friendly than the QNAP, but the QNAP still has all of the same bits uh, and it's a fantastic operating system, I've got to say. So this, I, I would say that for a techie, for somebody who really, really loves the tech and likes to get into the back backend, uh, the, the, the control panel and the sections in the QNAP may be a little bit more friendly to you in that sense. Uh, storage and snapshots is where you manage all of your disks. And you can see that straight away, there's a lot more things available over here. Under this one, you've got the uh, storage manager under the Synology. And it's pretty simple, right? It's pretty straightforward. While the QNAP one has a lot more stuff available to you, significantly more, but I can, same thing, I can go and see all my disks, I can see exactly what is running inside of them. Here are my hard drives. Remembering that this has got uh, four, three and a half inch, or at least the four on the front, and then my internal ones in there, all right? So you can do a lot more stuff, I think, from this perspective than you can on the Synology, but they're both very, very comparable. And I like both of them. I think they both do a really, really good job from an application perspective, from an operating perspective. If you're wanting to do certain things, more than likely that you can do them on both and both of them will do a pretty good job for you. Oh, it's getting better. Let's talk about the specs a little bit, okay? This Synology NAS packs a 
punch. As I said, it's got six bays. It comes with an AMD quad core 2.2 gigahertz CPU. Amazing, comes with cache or cache acceleration depending on where you're from. Performance is fantastic and it can be scaled up to 16 drives, okay? So this has six as you can see, but there's actually expansion ports on the back allowing you to expand it. If we look at the ports on the back, you've actually got a couple a couple of expansion things on the very back from an east SATA perspective, four ethernets, a couple of uh, USBs as well, and then a big old power, and there's two big uh, fans on the back. Now, as I said earlier, inside of it, I can actually put two M2 NVMEs, which is essentially a little form factor hard drive for getting fast storage, be able to read, write things really, really quickly. With my six bays out of the box, I can do up to 100 terabytes worth of storage. With 16 bays, I can do up to 260 terabytes. Wow. Ah, we. And as I said, go into your app store, you can just get so much expanded capability from this thing, from making it your backup destination, running the backup software, install virtualization software onto it, actually run VMs, connect it to virtualization platforms outside of here, run a media server, run VPNs, run proxies, run firewalls. You can do really cool stuff in here. So you get all your network traffic monitored and controlled through this if you need to. And then finally, it can be expanded up to 32 gig of RAM. Then the QNAP NAS. As I mentioned, this is the TSH987XURP model. What a beast this thing is. Nine hard drives, four on the front, two and a half inch or three and a half inch. But then inside you open the thing up and you can put in a further five, two and a half inch drives inside of it. It supports 128 gig of DDR4 ECC memory. Wow. Now CPU, this comes with an Intel Xeon quad core processor. I can add in high speed PCI Express Gen 4 slots, up to 25 gigabit ethernet adapters, fiber channel cards can do all of that sort of jazz. Now you can't do that of course with the desktop one because it's a desktop one. You're a little bit limited with the functionality on a desktop one, while the rack one lets me do a whole bunch more. Now four ethernets on the back, can do a couple of 10 gigs, couple of 2.5 gigs. So this thing is really aimed at uh, the more power user. Now I've got this in my home and that's fine and I like to play around with that sort of stuff, but it's generally gonna be aimed at the business user because it is the rack one. But this is the QNAP rack model because the QNAP also comes in a desktop range of NASs. There's a whole bunch of NASs available in the different configurations for either of the two. If you need to expand, add additional disks or trays in future, you can actually get a lot more storage from this one later on than this one, all right? If you're wanting to check the comparisons between them, uh, here's our Synology website. Just go into your Google machine, look up Synology comparisons, Synology NAS comparisons, go to their main synology.com website, all flash, high density, high scalability. Then you get into ones that are a little bit more desktop based, but there's a lot of other configuration options. But ultimately, they're all gonna be running the same operating system and the bells and whistles are gonna be fairly similar between all of them. Now, some features, in terms of uh, software features may not be available across every model because some of the models may only come with things that are relevant for that model of NAS, okay? Same deal on the QNAP, you can compare it, go into Google, type in QNAP comparisons, QNAP models, QNAP.com is the website and you can same deal, see exactly what's going on. Enterprise, dual control NASs, here are our rack based NASs, you got all flash stuff, but then we sort of jump into ones that are sort of like a little bit of a desktop hybrid and then same as the Synologies, we've got a few more desktop ones. I find there's a lot more models available uh, on QNAP than on a Synology. If you want a good quality NAS, right? A good quality NAS for home, for the business, wherever, you can't go wrong with Synology and QNAP. They are the leaders for a reason. They're sturdy, they're good quality. There's a whole bunch of people, community out there. As well as that, both QNAP and Synology support Fantastic, you're not gonna have any problems there. Now from a price perspective, we've got our Synology one. You're looking at around $800 to $900 for the model as is. Of course, if you want additional bits inside of it, you need to pay for that. Now these are sold diskless, which means there are no hard drives inside of the unit when you buy it. Okay, you then need to go and buy the hard drive. So factor that in when you are looking at buying the NAS. Each hard drive may cost you another two, 300 bucks, depending on the capacity, all right? Inside of it, the NVMEs, again, that'll be an additional expense. Then you got the QNAP, and the QNAP, of course, is gonna be a fair bit more. And that's expected, because it is a 
enterprise unit, right? It's aimed at the enterprise user. So you're just gonna get, you're getting a lot more, you know, oomph, a lot more grunt. It's gonna last you a lot longer, right? That one, about 3K, 3,000 US for one like this. Again, no hard drives. You gotta go and buy the hard drives, the ones at the front, the ones on the inside. And this is just for the 16 gig of RAM. So if you wanna pump this up with a lot more RAM, you're paying more for that. But this thing is just like, it's gonna blow the socks off this one. Okay, that's not to say that QNAP is better than Synology. This form factor, the specs inside of it, wow. Wow, wow, wow. It's worth the investment, especially for business, okay? So if we're gonna be comparing just the two out of the bag, right? For a home, for a small business, don't get that. It's just overkill, absolute overkill. Go for something like the Synology-based desktop NAS. For a business, for an enterprise user, medium, large business, go for the rack-based QNAP. Having said all of that, you know when you say having said that, it's almost like, well, don't worry about what I just said. This is actually what I, the main point. Depends on the configuration that you're after because you can get a rack-based Synology NAS and it'll blow the socks out of this one if you are pumping it full of grunt, yeah? If you came here watching, expecting me to tell you which one you should be getting, which brand is better, they're both pretty good, right? Now look, me personally, I've used QNAP only a little bit, only a little bit. For most of my career, Growing up in tech, right? I've worked with enterprise, like Dell EMCs and NetApps and things like that. When we're, whenever we've needed additional storage, additional capacity from a storage perspective, whenever I needed a backup solution, Synology was always the go-to brand for me, all right? And everybody that I've worked with swears by Synology because Synology are pretty, pretty good. They're pretty good and, and the support is fantastic and they last a long time. I mean, I've had Synology now that have lasted 10 plus years without skipping a beat. They're pretty sturdy, they're pretty good units. QNAP, amazing. If I compared the two now, which NAS you should be getting, I'd say the QNAP is up there as well. Only being that this one, I think the QNAP has a little bit more advanced configuration features available for you. I can't fault them. So far, they're pretty, pretty good. My coffee's gone. I may need to make another one because I like caffeine. Which NAS do you think is better? Which one are you thinking about getting if you don't already have one? Do the like. Do the subscription thing, click on the button on the bell. You know, subscribing lets me know that you like my content and that you wanna continue seeing good stuff being released from my channel. Hey, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next tech video. We'll see you then.